So this video is going to look at uh, the urban dynamics of change as outlined in the New South Wales uh, Geography HSC syllabus. So let's have a look at the first urban dynamic of change. So suburbanisation is probably one of the uh, biggest urban dynamics operating and uh, within New South Wales and Australia. Uh, we've seen the urban sprawl of Australia's city, in particular um, Sydney, uh, throughout last century into uh, this century. So suburbanisation, obviously the movement of people, employment and facilities away from the inner city towards outer urban areas. So why is this the case? Well, one of the biggest uh, factors that led to um, skyrocketing rates of suburbanisation was uh, ownership of uh, personal motor vehicles. So uh, mid last century, um, the motor car was obviously uh, widely available. Uh, to most families, it was seen uh, not only being used as transport, obviously a sign of wealth as well. So people didn't have to walk to work any longer, didn't have to catch the train or or uh, use trams. They could drive to work. So this meant that uh, cities expanded out to outer urban areas or suburbs. These suburbs uh, obviously attract other services as well. So we've seen schools. Uh, retail outlets and the like develop in your suburban areas as well because of course people demand services and when there's a demand uh, people who want to make some money meet that demand. So uh, the image on the left here is uh, just your, your typical suburban um, I guess development in Australia and it gives us uh, an idea or a, I guess a visual of one of these uh, phenomena that uh, happens in Australia and uh, in some other suburban areas of uh, cities of the developed world. This, uh, I'd probably say that these cities, uh, these houses rather, are examples of what we call a uh, McMansion. So as uh, land availability declines, um, people will buy smaller and smaller blocks, but uh, people's tastes and demands for what they want in a house uh, seem to get bigger and bigger. People want to have more rooms, more more uh, floor space. So we see the rise of the McMansion. As mentioned before, we see the uh, the rise of the large retail shopping centres. So we have here Castle Towers. And on the right, we've got the North West Rail Link, which is some infrastructure to reduce the amount of people driving to work from this particular region and uh, encouraging them to use public transport, which is... Uh, a good thing for uh, obviously uh, sustainability, uh, reducing traffic congestion and uh, improving um, uh, people's lives, I guess, spending less time in the car, in uh, traffic jams, more time uh, with their families. So the next uh, urban dynamic is ex-urbanisation. So this is a process where people uh, usually those who are quite affluent move from the city to rural areas but continue to maintain an urban way of life of either through long distance commuting or technology. So people um, may feel as though they want to escape the hustle and bustle, the noise, the pollution of city areas but still want to maintain that uh, maybe that, uh, that job that they have in the city. So they might do that through uh, daily commuting, maybe only commuting a couple of days a week or maybe uh, using uh, communications technology of some type to uh, maintain that, uh, that job. Now, one particular hotspot for exurbanisation uh, close to Sydney is the Southern Highlands. So if you have been to, to Barrel before, you might have seen some uh, quite expensive cars driving down the middle of the street. You might also see some very large uh, rural estates. Um, maybe the, the family has an interest in... Uh, Horse riding, this this type of thing. Um, so, uh, wealthy families might uh, participate in ex-urbanisation. So, counter-urbanisation. So, where people move out of a large metropolitan area into a non-metropolitan area and have little to no contact with large metro areas. Counter-urbanisation is not very prominent within New South Wales or many other um, areas of the uh, developed world. What we see rather is uh, continued urbanisation. More than half the world live in urban areas now and uh, urbanisation continues every day. 
uh, I guess some um, uh, push factors that might push people away from the city are a lack of affordability. Of course, cities are very expensive places to live, but overall, there are not that many people moving out to small rural areas and uh, having no contact with these large metropolitan areas. I read a newspaper article recently talking about um, quite a high percentage of people who do uh, this particular thing might move out to a very small rural area. Uh, many of them move back to those city areas within five years. One urban dynamic which is similar yet different to counter-urbanisation but is more prominent within New South Wales and other areas is decentralisation. So people moving out from your large capital cities and large urban areas to smaller uh, rural or regional uh, towns and cities. So the New South Wales government promotes uh, decentralisation through the Evo Cities program, so encouraging people to move to uh, towns such as Armadale, Dubbo, Orange, because uh, of maybe a lifestyle change, more opportunity and more affordability. So people are being pushed from those urban areas because of a lack of, afford of, uh, of affordability. Housing prices, very expensive in Sydney, uh, even right on Sydney's urban fringe in your outer suburban areas uh, and simply paying for most things is more expensive in, in Sydney so people might be encouraged to move to these areas because of that particular uh, reason. One urban dynamic of change that is uh, prominent in Sydney is urban consolidation. Uh, we see suburban growth um, being somewhat constrained in Sydney because of uh, its topographical characteristics. Obviously, uh, uh, east of Sydney, you have the Tasman Sea. To the west of Sydney, you have the Blue Mountains. To the north, you have the Hawkesbury region. And to the, to the south, you have the, the Southern Highlands and also Royal National Park. So there's only so far that uh, Sydney can expand. So when you can't expand out, the best way to go is up. So urban consolidation, so encouragement of high population densities in established urban areas, usually through government policies and planning regulations, allowing more dwelling units on a given area of land by subdividing existing land or granting strata title to smaller lots and apartments. So this type of, uh, I guess, infrastructure growth, uh, this type of residential areas are the most sustainable because you've got that small footprint um, and it's encouraged by the New South Wales government. Not everyone enjoys this type of living but it's definitely becoming the norm. In a future video we'll have a look at um, some of the rates of uh, building approvals for this type of living, apartment style living, and we'll note that it's becoming very very popular in Sydney particularly as those uh, people who may not want to live on the outer fringe and want to maintain that, that cosmopolitan lifestyle. Urban decay, so the deterioration of the built environment, urban infrastructure falls into a state of disrepair and buildings are left empty for long periods of time. So what we might see is maybe uh, a, an industry might shut down uh, in the south of Sydney, Redfern uh, and also um, uh, Alexandria have previously experienced um, some growth of industry in that uh, area back in the last century, but we've also seen a decline in that particular type of commercial uh, and manufacturing in, in those areas. So th there's been, uh, I guess, widespread decay in some areas. Uh, what we see here are three examples of urban decay. On the far left we have, I guess, an extreme case of urban, de uh, urban decay. Uh, that's actually in Detroit in the USA. Uh, we s have seen the decline of uh, manufacturing, the, obviously the car sector in uh, Detroit, uh, formerly Motor City, uh, but this has declined somewhat and we see large uh, examples of urban decay. The other two examples are within Sydney, so you might have maybe the impacts of uh, lower socioeconomic communities, uh, urban blight, uh, areas just not being cared for, looked after, to um, uh, as compared with some other areas. 
And in the middle there you have a, um, I think it's a hotel that uh, previously shut down. There hasn't been any, uh, any movement going on in that particular place. So that is another example of urban decay. Uh, with urban decay comes urban renewal. So one particular area south of Sydney that has uh, undergone urban renewal and continues to have urban uh, renewal projects uh, approved is Redfern. So Redfern uh, has somewhat of a stigma related to it. Uh, what we see here on the right is an image of Australian Technology Park, which is uh, quite a, uh, I guess, a large-scale urban renewal project. Um, previously, it uh, was an uh, industrial area, but now it uh, plays host to uh, many conferences and the like, and uh, it's been renewed somewhat. It's, uh, I guess it's a, a breath of, of fresh air and you get uh, new people uh, into that community who maybe would not have uh, had any reason to visit that area previously. On the left we have uh, Sydney's biggest urban renewal project currently um, underway which is the Barangaroo development which is a mix of commercial, uh, residential and uh, retail outlets um, on uh, Darling Harbour for sure. So on the far left there you can see James Packer's Six Star Casino which is uh, planned to be built and uh, also some residential and commercial areas. Urban Village. So this is a distinct, uh, distinctive residential commercial district whose function and character is closely identified with its local community. On the right we have the, the rainbow um, uh, crossing in uh, King's Cross, so that area, Oxford Street, uh, obviously in that surrounding area, very large uh, gay and lesbian community, um, and people with shared interests, and hence the uh, the community displays uh, uh, the characteristics of an urban village. On the right, we have uh, Cabramatta. Uh, Cabramatta is known for its uh, Vietnamese culture, and uh, obviously large population of Vietnamese uh, migrants. Uh, so these two areas are examples of urban villages, obviously uh, relating to the, the people who live in those areas and I guess what can be seen in terms of the area's form and function uh, because of the community. So the last uh, urban dynamic of change, one that is becoming less and less prominent in cities of the developed world is spatial exclusion. 20, 30 years ago, this urban dynamic of change was very, uh, I guess it was definitely growing. It was becoming more and more uh, prominent because um, you had people, I guess, fearing the outside and there was this sense of security and privacy that came along with these walled estates. So you're protecting luxury lifestyles. So we've got Jackson's Landing on the left there in Piermont. On the right, it's not an example from Sydney, but uh, it's a local example in Port Macquarie here that... Uh, I guess you might be able to relate to. But uh, as I said before, it's becoming less and less prominent uh, in Sydney and in New South Wales, also in the USA as well, which uh, previously uh, hosted many of these uh, types of developments. So there are the nine or so uh, urban dynamics of change listed in the HSC uh, syllabus. Uh, reflect upon those, think about the examples that I gave. Try to think of your own examples as well. So what you need to do is have a, a clear understanding of what the urban dynamic is, how it operates, and some relevant examples.